the dynamic program to construct rectangular bar visibility representation extensions requires a quite strong tool, the so-called SPQR tree or the SPQR decomposition of a planar graph. We already learned the SPQ tree, which is the serious parallel decomposition tree. In the SPQR tree, we just have one additional node, but that allows us to get a decomposition of any planar graph. And we do that by separation pairs. So let's say we have a separation pair UV, then we can cut the graph between them into two parts, the red and the blue part. That also means that we can recursively go inside here, again find separation pairs, and decompose it furthermore. And from that decomposition, we will get a tree. There are four types of nodes in this decomposition. We have S nodes, that's a serious composition, so we have a path of cut vertices. We have P nodes, that's a parallel composition, so we have a separation pair and a bunch of components between them. We have a Q node that is just a single edge. And now additionally, we have so-called R nodes. An R node is a rigid subgraph, that's a three connected subgraph. Now so here we have a bunch of separation pairs between all pairs of these vertices and some components in between. If we don't have R nodes, then we automatically have a serious parallel graph, because then we only have sp and q nodes, we get an spq tree that gives us a serious parallel decomposition. With such an spqr tree, we can represent all planar embeddings of the graph. Because exactly at these p nodes, we have the choice to flip the order. We can do all these components in any order we want. But the rigid stuff, it's reconnected, there's a single embedding, and the path, there's also a single embedding. So from these P nodes, if we just change the order there, we get all planar embeddings of the graph. And the nice thing is, we can compute this SPQR tree in linear time. It's not very easy to do this, but this is a very strong tool that we can use to solve a lot of problems also in linear time. And one example of those we will have in this lecture here, with the bar visibility representation extension. So let's have a look at one example of this SPQR tree. We have a graph G here, and we try to construct our SPQR tree. In the beginning, we have a separation pair 1 and 14. That's our nodes S and T. We will use an edge between them as the reference edge. From now on, in addition to what we have, we will always have a reference edge in our node so that we know where to put links back later on. If we go here, this is a separation pair, we have two components, so it's a P component. We have the red component here and the blue component here, and then we have the reference edge. Let's have a look at the red component first. And here we have cut vertices, so we must have an S node. And in S node, we want to have a path of cut vertices. So if we start from here, we get to the two, we get to the three, then we get a larger component, get to the nine, and then to the 14. On the right side, we also have cut vertices. So we have a path from one to 10, then the component from 10 to 13, and then 13 to 14. If we continue here, we have four components. Three of these are just single edges, so we have Q nodes here. But this we have to divide further. And now if we check, is this an S node? No, there's no cut vertex here. Is this a P node? No, because we don't have parallel paths, they are interconnected here. That means that here we get an R node and the rigid component we get is from the separation pairs. So 3, 4 gives us an edge, 3, 8 gives us an edge, this gives us an edge, this gives us an edge, but 4 and 8 give us a separation pair because there's something inside here. 
So we get this R node. Again, we have a bunch of single edges, so we get Q nodes here, but this part we have to further divide. And here we can again see we have cut vertices, we get a path, so we have an S node. Then we further divide here, I don't show that to you, but this is again a P node, we have one edge and one path. Then this gives us a Q node, and this path we have an S node with two Q nodes. And we do the same thing on the right. We have two edges here that gives us two Q nodes. And this again here gives us a smaller node. And that's clearly a P node. We have these two parallel paths. Each of these edges gives us an S node. And that gives us two Q nodes. And from that we get the SPQR tree of this graph. What people often do is that they omit the Q nodes. Because those are quite boring. That's just single edges. And when we want to have an algorithm for some problem, then we often use this SPQR tree and we have to figure out what do we do at S nodes, what do we do at P nodes, and what do we do at R nodes. And for our representation extension problem, we will do that in the next two parts.